Hi, it's Tom, and in this video we're going to talk a little bit more about classes and objects in object-oriented programs. We'll touch on encapsulation, uh, look at attributes and behaviors, uh, we'll look at classes, the relationship between class and object, as well as uh, review inheritance and polymorphism with an example. So one of the big ideas in object-oriented programming is the idea of encapsulation. What we want to do is we want to bind together some data as well as the procedures that manipulate, manipulate that data into a self-contained object. Once we do that, because everything is contained inside of an object, um, it makes it sort of easy to handle and easy to reuse. Also, what it does is it prevents this data from being misused. For example, if there's only certain things that the my rank or my suit uh, attribute can be set to, or these variables can be set to, if the only way we can set them is by going through this set rank or set suit procedure, um, then we can build in some validation so that these never get invalid values. So we have all of those discrete elements lumped together, bound together, encapsulated into a self-contained object. Objects have attributes. So the, an attribute is a, a piece of data that's associated with the object. So for example, if we're looking at a, a playing card, a playing card has a rank. So this particular playing card, its rank is ace. Um, a playing card also has a suit. In this particular example, the suit for this playing card is clubs. A playing card could be face up or face down. So we're representing that with a Boolean value. Okay, face up is equal to true in this particular case. All of the attributes for the object together are known as the object state. So changing any one of these or multiple uh, of these attributes will change the object state overall. Objects also have behaviors. Behaviors are those procedures that manipulate the data or change the state of the, or maybe not change it, but find out what the state of the object is. Okay, so for example, our playing card right now has a, uh, um, a face-up state of true. If I had a, um, a behavior defined called flip card, um, what this line of code might actually do is change the state of this object so that face up is false. So that's an example of a behavior. A class is like a blueprint or a recipe for an object. Okay, what the class does is it declares the attributes and the behaviors that a type of object will have. And then it also defines exactly what each of these behaviors is going to do. To actually create an object, we use uh, instantiation, okay? It's similar to declaring a variable from a data type, but what we do is we instantiate an object from a class. Instantiate is basically a fancy way of saying create or declare. So we have our class playing card, which defines these certain attributes and defines all of these behaviors. From this class, we can actually create several different playing card objects. So it's important to understand the difference between the class, which is just the blueprint, and the actual objects, which are actual playing cards in this particular case. Each of the playing cards could have a different state. Um, so you can see here ace and queen and five and jack, all different suits. Some objects, even though they're different objects, might have the same state. Okay, that doesn't make them the same object per se. We would still recognize if we had two jokers in a deck that they were physically different objects. Another big idea in object-oriented programming is the concept of inheritance. And it's basing a new class on an existing class, focusing only on those things that make the new class unique. Okay, um, this really promotes effective code reuse. So for example, if we created a, a generic class called card, and regardless of the type of card we're dealing with, a card will have a height and a width, and it might have a, a stock weight, the, the weight of the paper, as well as other attributes and other behaviors. 
so that's kind of a generic thing. Another programmer might take this basic class and extend it to create our playing card class. So if you create your playing card class as kind of a child class or a derived class from card, we don't have to define all of these attributes again. We just simply say it's a card that has these extra things. So a rank and a suit, a face up property and what other other things we think that a, a playing card should have. Another programmer or you yourself at another time might decide to create a completely different type of class business card in this particular case, it's still based on card. And the same sort of idea, we're not reinventing the wheel by redefining all of these um, attributes and behaviors. We simply say a business card is a card. It has all of these attributes and behaviors plus these extra ones, okay? So card is kind of the parent class to both playing card and business card, which makes playing card and, and business card kind of sibling classes, if you will. Another big idea in object-oriented programming is polymorphism. So polymorphism is an operation or a procedure that can be applied to more than one kind of object, okay, or type. There's different types of polymorphism. Some of them we've done, um, and some of them we will do. Uh, the first type is ad hoc polymorphism, which uh, an example of that is function overloading. Uh, so we've done that ourselves, or we've had two functions with the same name, but have different parameters. There's parametric polymorphism or generics. This is uh, something we've done with function templates. When we created function templates, uh, we were using parametric polymorphism, if we want to use some fancy words there, or generics. The third type of polymorphism that comes into play is called inclusion polymorphism or subtyping. Um, and that's when an identifier can refer to more than one type of object as long as that object inherits from a common parent class. So for example, I have a function here represented by this box called print any card. And you can imagine it's gonna be printing any type of card. It takes a parameter of the uh, class card. So an object, uh, a card object called X. Now, what can I send to this particular function to actually print it out? Well, I can send a playing card. Okay, so this playing card, even though it's not a card, it's a playing card specifically, it will still be accepted by this parameter and the function can still do its job. Another time I call this function, I can send it a business card. This is my silly business card that I made up. Okay, so uh, even though it's a different type of card, it inherits from the class card and therefore print any card will be able to accept it as a parameter and do some stuff with it. Um, so that's inclusion polymorphism. So that wraps up this week's uh, pre-class video. In class this week, what we'll do is we'll actually develop a class in C++. So we'll talk about um, how you actually set up the class definition, uh, define the various different members, and we're gonna talk about special functions called accessors, mutators, and constructors. Thanks very much.